Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church on this, the third Sunday in the season of Lent. Uh, we have two candles that are not lit on our cross, reflecting that two weeks of Lent have passed. Uh, on Wednesday, if you're with us, we'll have one less candle lit on our countdown cross toward the darkness of Good Friday. We'd like to welcome those that are joining us via our YouTube channel. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. <coughs> if this is your first time joining us, my name is Reverend Louis Bolt. I'm the pastor at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hammond, Louisiana. We're glad you found our channel and are able to join us and participate with us in this way. We do long for the day that you'll be able to worship with us in person as we gather together week in, week out, as the body of Christ to hear God's word, to sing our praises, and give thanks to him for everything that he does for us through his beloved son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today's service will be used uh, using Divine Service Setting 4, which is found on page 203 in your hymnal. Uh, there's lots of lovely ribbons for you to mark your spots in the hymnal, the liturgy, the hymns, all those things. And uh, for those of you uh, on the YouTube channel, if you haven't already done so, please click the link in the description of the video. It will take you to the end of the service so that you can follow along and participate wherever you happen to be. I don't think there are any other surprises in store for us this day. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, you have, you have brought us here to this holy place through the power of your Holy Spirit. You have led us here so that we may hear your word. So we pray that you'd open our hearts and our ears to, to the word that is read and proclaimed in this place. May it lead us to repentance and turn us around and come back to you to receive that forgiveness that Jesus has won for us and for the pours out upon us. Bless this time that we have together as we give you thanks and praise for everything that you continue to do for us through your beloved Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 608. <coughs> to you, Lord, I make confession. Thank you.
invite you to stand as you are able for confession and absolution, which is printed on page 203 of your hymnal and found in the PDF. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sin in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We'll have a period of silence as we reflect on our nature in the light of God's word in the Ten Commandments. <coughs> Let us call unto the Lord, Almighty, Almighty God, God, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Forgive us our sins, sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has <laughs> given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And I'll serve with you. Our service will continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord of mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as our service will continue as we speak our verse of the month, which is printed for you on the inside of your bulletin cover. It's from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. And being a perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5, 9, and 10. Our source will continue with the readings. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is under the, in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you your son, or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. 
You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet, covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our service continues as we speak responsibly verse, the verses of Psalm 19 with parts for the entire congregation indicated by a C and a bold. <coughs> the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day, the course has speech and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Its rising is from the east, from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and give you them there is a great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servants also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are <coughs> perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it, is, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Jesus Christ whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as you're able out of respect for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show to us, show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them, because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service will continue as we confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is printed for you on page 206 in your hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in his conscious lives. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, who will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who is seated from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism with remission of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our sight be pleasing, uh, the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, you've probably all heard this phrase at least once or twice before in your life, you, you might even have uttered this phrase or sentence once or twice in your life. The phrase is this, the sentence is this, life is all about the choices. On the one hand, it's a, it's a truism that, that life involves choices. We make decisions about what to wear, where we're going to live, where we're going to go to school, what job we might like to have. Life is full of choices. And each and every one of us face those choices every day. This is not something new. In fact, every single human being faces these same choices or choices like these each and every day. For those of you who know me, I have it very easy when it comes to my wardrobe because I wear black every day of the week. It makes it much easier for me. I don't have to make choices. Just grab the next one in line in the closet and it'll all be good. 
On the one hand, it reflects that universal truth that life is full of choices. But I, I think there's an, another layer to, to meaning behind the phrase, life is all about the choices. I think for many people, and maybe even for you and for me, when we hear that phrase, that sentence, life is all about the choices, in the back of our minds, we have this, this idea that if I make good choices, good things will happen to me. And if I happen to make a bad choice, bad things might happen to me. Now, I, I don't know about you. I, I can't speak for you, so I can, I can only speak for myself, but if, if I'm completely honest, there are times when I thought I made the right choice, the good choice. But good didn't come out of that choice. I don't know if that's ever happened to you or not, but it's happened to me on more than one occasion where I, I thought I was making the right decision, making the right choice, the good choice. And yet, in the end, good did not come out of it. Now, I'm not going to speak for you. I'm only gonna speak for myself. There have been many times in my life where I've made bad choices. Bad choices that sometimes I got away with. Bad choices that sometimes bit me in the proverbial butt. They came back to haunt me. Now, I don't know if that's ever happened to you or not, but each and every day, you and I are faced with choices. Sometimes we think it's a good choice, and sometimes we reap the rewards of the choice. Sometimes we think it's a good choice, and sometimes we don't get the reward. And then there are those other times where we make maybe bad choices in life, and sometimes good comes out of it, and sometimes it doesn't. This is part of every single person's life. You know it and you know it very well because as you look at yourself and think about this topic, you've seen the choices you've made in your life. Sometimes good choices. Maybe choices that weren't so good. And the reason I bring that up is because Paul, in his epistle, in our epistle reading for today, as Paul writes to the saints in the city of Corinth from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, Paul talks about choices. Now, not the choices of those Christians, mind you, but choices of the world. You see, the world chooses to operate in a certain way, Paul says. The world operates through looking for wisdom and knowledge. The world often operates through strength. Might makes right. right. That's the way the world works. The world thinks that you can come to the knowledge of God through wisdom and understanding, or that you can do something to and for God so that he will bless you and benefit you. This is the way that the world works when it comes to faith and religion. <clears throat> but Paul says that's not the way that God works. The world seeks after wisdom. In fact, he says Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. And just to be clear, Jews refers to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Greeks refers to everybody else. And Paul says that the Jews demand signs and the Greeks seek wisdom. They're looking for things that they can use to find God. But Paul says that's not the way God works. That may be the way the world works. That if you find the right thing, if you do the right thing, you can get right with God. But Paul says that is not the way God works. In fact, he says, 
that God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is low, what is weak in the world to shame the strong. You see, life might be filled with a lot of choices, and it is. But the most important choice of all is what God chose for his creation. You see, God says, you won't find me through worldly wisdom. Seek and work as hard as you may, but you will never find me that way. I have to come to you, God says. I choose to reveal myself and my salvation to you through my word that is read and proclaimed and through the cross, the cross of Jesus the Christ. At the very beginning of our reading, Paul says this, for the word of the cross is folly, it's foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And this, my dear friends, is why Paul preaches Christ and him crucified. Everywhere Paul goes, this is the message. In fact, this is the message of all the apostles, all the sent ones. This is the message of the church still to this day. Christ crucified. Now to the world, to the world, this makes no sense. You're telling me that someone else took what I deserve upon themselves? But, but, but in the world, in the world, you get what you want, what you deserve. That's the way the world works. But God says, no, I have a better way for you, the, the best way for you which is that Jesus takes our sins upon himself. Jesus takes the wrath that you and I deserve upon himself so that at the cross, through his blood, through his life, we can receive the forgiveness of sins. And we do. But, but it's not based on us. It's based on what God does to us and for us. You see, God has chosen you to be his child. He could have said, well, I want you to be my child, but I want you to earn your way into my good graces. He, he could have said that, but he chose not to because he knows that you and I would never be good enough to be declared his gracious child his forgiven child. No matter how hard we try, we could never be good enough to earn our way in. And this is why God chose us before the foundation of the world to be his beloved children in Christ Jesus. God chose to adopt you, to make you his daughter and his son in Christ Jesus. And God says, I know everything you're going to do in your life. I know everything you have done in your life, but I choose you, and you are mine. You are mine by my grace. You are mine by the faith that I give to you that trusts in the work of my beloved son who died for you, who bore you, my wrath upon himself for you so that you wouldn't have to. God chose you, and this makes all the difference in the world. The world says, you got to earn it. The world says, you can do it. But God says otherwise. God says, you can't, but I can God says, I have in my son Jesus Christ. And as you are baptized into his death and his resurrection, I put you to spiritual death and I raised you to new life. And now, now your life has changed. 
No longer someone separated from me, but part of my beloved family. I have claimed you as my own child. I have given you my name in Christ Jesus. And you, you are right in my eyes. All because of what my son has done for you. It's true that life is full of choices. It's true that you and I face choices each and every day. Sometimes we think we're making the right choice. Sometimes we discover we make the wrong choice. But there is one choice that never disappoints. God's choice of you. God's selection of you to be his beloved child. That is a choice that will never disappoint. Because in Christ Jesus, in the cross of Christ Jesus, every one of your sins have been forgiven. In the empty tomb on Easter morning, Jesus has come back to life to pronounce peace into this world that you and I live in. Peace into our hearts and into our lives that comes from the forgiveness of sins in him and through him for you and for me. It may not make sense to the world around us, but this is God's word of truth to all those who believe and trust in Jesus for their salvation. You are forgiven. You are saved. And God will watch over you and bring you to himself to wait for that last day to come that last day where God will make another choice, a choice to raise you up from the dead and to give you eternal life in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God that he makes all the right choices for you and for me. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 579, The Law of God is Good and Wise, with a brief introduction. Oh.
invite you to stand as you are able for the prayer of the church. Uh, the congregational response for each petition is hear our prayer. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, you are a jealous God. Save the third and fourth generations that will come after us from your punishment. Fill us with your son's zeal for, for your house that we may cast every idol from our hearts and be devoted to you and your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your son's cross and crucifixion is folly to the world, but it is the source of repentance and forgiveness for all his elect. Preserve the preaching of the cross in our midst, that from this life-giving tree we would continually receive your faith-preserving gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, preserve and bless all Christian households, that husbands and wives would live in love and service to each other, that fathers and mothers would diligently bring up their children in your fear, and that children would honor their parents and be well equipped for service to their neighbors in this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord of the perfect law, you have called all You've called us to honor our parents and all other authorities, that it may go well with us in our land. Bless President Biden and Governor Landry and all who govern us. Make them wise in your ways, that your justice may be upheld among us. Help us to serve and obey them in accord with your will. Watch over all who serve in the military and their families, and help them to fulfill their duties in a way that is pleasing in your sight, especially praying for Katie, Brent, Mark, Kristen, and Jacob. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, your steadfast love in Christ is good. Turn in your abundant mercy toward all who suffer in our midst, especially Kathy, Anitha, the Anders family, Doug, Chris, Kurt, Mike, Billy, Deb, Dan, Irene, Ron, Alan, Deborah, Larry, Shannon, Bob, Donna, Renee, Dorothy, Betty, Ginger, Joanne, Jennifer, Donna, Jack, Martha, Jackie, Kevin, Jerome, James, Jordan, Curtis, Jackie, Candy, Lana, Deanna, Joel, Sandy, Melanie, Madison, Patty, <coughs> Justin, Joshua, Sean, Barbara, Emily, Dylan, Macy, Mary, Cherie, Ron, Ronald, Jamie, Gail, Paula, Jody, Angelica, Dave, Jeanette, Ken, Daphne, Lana, Buck, Claire, Dixie, Shane, Nikki, Al, Dana, Isaiah, Randy, Tyson, Shirley, John, Krishan, Marie, Rich, Midge, <coughs> Emily, Martha, Olivia, Kimberly, Owen, Bonnie, Max, Judy, Brad, Hannah, Jeff, Pete, Sandra, Kathleen, Ronnie, Braden, Blaze, David, Andrea, Brent, Ruth, Jim, Susan, Dodie, Happy, Peggy, Denise, Marie, Rita, Jojo, Joseph, Kurt, Denise, Lee, Sandra, Doris, Reverend Taglauer, Philip, Sharon, Cricket, Jean, Lottie, Gail, and Lauren, the people of the Middle East, the people of the Ukraine, for those impacted by disasters of nature and man, for couples who long for a child, and for those who are expecting. Do not let the flood sweep over them, nor the pits close its mouth on them. Deliver them and grant them healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our rock and redeemer, though we cannot even discern all our errors, declare us innocent in Christ for all hidden faults, and by your Holy Spirit, keep us back from presumptuous sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you provide for each and every need of your creation, for which we give you our thanks and our praise, especially for the birth of Odin, and that you would give him the gift of new life through the power of the Holy Spirit in the waters of holy baptism, for the successful surgery that you have given to Dixie and Ronnie, and for another year of life that you are granting to uh, Rochelle, Esther, Cheryl, Mark, Robert, Dorothy, Joan, Robert, and Ruth. Help us to use all your gifts to serve our neighbor and to honor your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you bless this day and make it holy with your word and the gifts of your altar. Grant that we may come before your presence to eat your son's body and blood, not boasting of ourselves, but of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. O Lord, our rock and redeemer, three days after the temple of your son's body was destroyed by wicked men, you raised it up again. Grant that on the last day we and all your saints who now rest in your presence may share in the glory of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, as our service will continue momentarily with the service of the sacrament of the altar. Uh, normally at this time we take up the gathering of gifts, tithes, and offerings that the people of God return to the house of the Lord. For those who are worshiping in person, I mean, if, you have, if you haven't already done so, you may place your uh, tithe, gift, and offering in the offering plates at the, at the entrance of the sanctuary when you depart along with an attendance card to help uh, reproduce our attendance count. And we'd like to encourage those that are joining us from afar to continue to support the work that God has given us to do in this place by sending in your tithe, gift, and offering directly to the church office. If you'd like to drop it off, please call first just to make sure that someone is here to receive you. Now our organist will give us a musical interlude as I prepare the table for the service of the sacraments of the altar. I invite you to stand as you're able for the service of the sacraments of the altar. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, O, o Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore. Praising you and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise, now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ on the night when he was betrayed with bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Oh, 
His gracious 
study on prophets and prophetic speech. Um, you're welcome to join us anytime you can. And then there's the Board of Elders meeting tomorrow <coughs> on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Uh, that'll be live in person and also uh, Zoom for those that won't be able to attend in person. On Wednesday is our fourth Wednesday in Lent. We'll, we'll have finished up three weeks and we're starting the fourth week, so we'll have one less candle lit on our cross. We have services at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, the 11 a.m. service is live streamed on our YouTube channel. Uh, and for those of you who join us uh, in person for the evening service, we, we do have a soup supper at 6 p.m. Uh, so you're invited to join us for that. And then next Sunday, uh, we have our uh, divine service, uh, well, our educational program and our divine service at 10:15. And no confirmation class because they will be enduring their examinations. So that's next weekend on the 9th and the 10th. Our Catechumens will be uh, going through their uh, examination process, uh, and hopefully um, they will have mastered their memory work and be able to uh, confess their faith publicly on Palm Sunday and to receive the sacrament of the altar. Uh, but that remains to be seen. So, um, <laughs> okay. uh, uh, in the inside of your bulletin, there were a couple of uh, flyers. One was a purple one. Uh, the half sheet of paper, and we, on the first Sunday of the month, we, we include one of these uh, for the uh, LWML grant projects that were adopted at the National uh, Convention uh, this past summer. Um, and this one is uh, in, our, in our neck of the woods, as they say. It's in Tyler, Texas. It's for a disaster response team at Trinity Lutheran Church. So you can look at that. And so if you're contributing mites uh, to our local congregation, uh, this is where some of your mites would go to support a project like this. And then on the, uh, the other one was a green sheet, um, a devotional resource for individuals, families, and small groups built around the orders of daily prayer found in Lutheran service book. Uh, contains our reading plan to read through the Bible in two years. We're in the book of Joshua. We'll be there a little longer. Uh, Joshua was the son of Nun who took over after Moses uh, rested with the fathers after Moses died. He's, he's led the people into the promised land. And so we're hearing over and over again uh, 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 from Joshua, the book of Joshua, about how God wants them to be as his people um, and to what they're supposed to do. On the inside of the green sheet are those that are requested prayers from the congregation. Um, and then on the back are announcements. So we've already talked about the worship service and the soup supper. So, uh, you know, there is a sign-up sheet. I, I need commitment. So can't make a commitment. It's too early. But if you'd like to make a commitment, you can sign up on the sign-up sheet. And I, I was tempted. I'm not going to, but I was, I was tempted to tell a lie that Marie put up a sign-up sheet for the Easter breakfast just to see who would sign up on it. I didn't. I put it up, but the, the, Easter, the sign-up sheet for our Easter potluck breakfast is up. It's on the, this side of the cross hallway right behind the organ. If you'd like to help plan for that or you can see what we're going to need, uh, for that, um, and if you disagree with the quantities, you can always bring more. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Um, uh, during the season of Lent, our, our LWML Society here at St. Paul is taking up collections for uh, personal hygiene kits for those who are uh, coming to disaster times. There's some yellow sheets of half sheets of paper on the card tables in the cross hallway with the items. You don't have to get everything. You can just get a couple things if you'd like. Bring it. There's some baskets in the cross hallway, purple. Um, and uh, you can put the items in there, and then they're going to assemble kits at the end of the season of Lent uh, to, to deliver to Orphan Grain Train. Um, they also have a meeting this coming Saturday uh, on the 9th, uh, beginning at 10 a.m. in the library. So they gather together once a month for a time for, for, for study of God's word, for prayer, and for some business, but also for some fellowship. That's that fun, I think, part that's in there. Yeah, it's at the end, almost at the end of that. 
And then the glory of the, the flowers have been given to the glory of God this week. And then the food of the month for the Tangy Food Pantry is uh, macaroni and cheese, every child's favorite. And so as you have means and ability, you may bring that in and place it in the wicker baskets in the cross hallway. We try to deliver that once a week to our local, one of our local food pantries to help those in need in our community. And then there is a stewardship thought for you based on our gospel reading for today and also a life thought for you based on um, our Old Testament reading and our gospel reading. And you can share those with other people in your social media, in print, um, in your conversations as God's word continues to have its way with us uh, in this world. Any announcements that I'm not aware of? Yes. Traffic flow Wednesday. Yeah, so Wednesday, um, LSU's playing in town across the street. It's going to be a zoo, but we're still having church. Okay, there will be signs out here, over here, saying no athletic parking. So hopefully people will, they did pretty well last week. Hopefully people will obey. Um, but then also the, we'll open up the chains um, just before the, you know, 6 o'clock. The game starts at 6. So hopefully everyone will get here and get in the stadium. Um, and then we'll open up the chains. Uh, and you can just come in this double entrance over here and park in the parking lot. Okay, so we, we will be having church. And, uh, um, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll even get a foul ball as it clangs off the roof. Um, but nevertheless, it'll wake everybody up. No. Anything else? Thank you. Yes. Just one other thing. Um, Elder Bill, uh, this month has our zone rally yeah, on the 16th. 15th. 16th. 16th. And we'll be going to Trinity in Baton Rouge. And their, one of their gifts for the hard items is um, gently used they found a place where there is a need for shoes, and they are collecting those as part of that um, gift. For Male, them. female, both? Male yes, female. children, all, all ages. Okay. And we only have next week to bring them, because the rally will be the following week. But I'll have a container back there. If you go through your closet, you find some shoes that you haven't worn too much, and you want to take them out of your closet, we'd be happy to take any shoes. All right. They refurbished them. Okay. All right. Anything else? Seeing uh, no hands, only hearing the voices in my head. I'm going to greet you in the back. Have a blessed week. We'd like to thank those that are still with us on our YouTube channel. We hope you can join us next uh, week as well for our next offering on Wednesday, but then also on Sunday. And we do long for the day that you can join us in person. Uh, but until that day comes, continue to, to worship with us virtually.